Hello everyone, I'm Adrian Brown, um, Director of Adrian Brown Consulting. I've been working in the healthcare communications industry for 25 years now um, provide, and now provide communication training services to help people in our industry learn from my own experiences, both good and bad, to become better at what they do. I'm here today as part of a medical communications networking initiative to look at how medical communications agencies can add value and develop stronger partnerships with their clients by actively contributing to developing an effective strategic communications program for the products in which they work. The, this presentation has been taken from part of the ongoing landscape training that I've been running with Medcoms Networking. So in the next few minutes I'll present an overview of the major communication initiatives employed by pharma companies at each stage of the drug's life cycle and areas where medical communication agencies can best support them. So first of all, what do I mean by strategic communications planning? Put simply, it's develop, developing a plan to gain product adoption and usage through a systematic dissemination of the key messages, evidence-based messages, to appropriate target audiences at the optimal time using the most effective communication channels. Even though this is fundamentally the responsibility of the pharma company itself, it's one core area where communication agencies can really differentiate themselves and form a strong partnership with their clients by supporting them with the strategic communications process. In a way, it's a way of really getting under the skin of a product and becoming an invaluable partner to your client companies. Fundamental to an effective strategic communications plan is to ensuring it completely differentiates the product being promoted from its competitors. Good medical communications companies can support their clients by helping to develop key messages based on unmet customer needs and evidence-based data. And running positioning and message development workshops to support your clients can help you to differentiate your agency and strengthen the partnership with your clients. And of course, ongoing competitor intelligence gathering is a key part of this process and again another key role for medical communications agencies in supporting their clients. Fundamentally it's essential that you understand to whom we're communicating with when developing a medical communications plan and this is particularly true when promoting a prescription medicine where the person to whom the drug is being promoted, the prescriber, is providing the drug to the person taking the drug, the patient, who is being supplied by the pharmacist and paid for by someone else, in the case of a reimbursed medicine, by the payer. It's clearly not the same as buying uh, from a supermarket. So we really need to ensure that we have the correct messages tailored to address the needs and concerns of each of the respective audiences when we're developing any type of communications plan. Before we even begin the process of strategic communications planning, we need to get an in-depth understanding of the market in which we'll be operating in. This understands looking at unmet market needs, existing comp uh, competitor profiles, and a, a knowledge of forthcoming pipeline competitors. Now, dedicated market research agencies are normally employed, commissioned by pharmaceutical companies to find out all this information, but it's essential that they share that with all agencies involved in future communications initiatives to ensure that everyone has a consistency in the understanding. So that's step one. Clinical studies, again, they're pivotal in providing the data and evidence on which our strategic communication plans are based. Now, whilst these are clearly the responsibility of the pharmaceutical company or the clinical research organisation who conducts the studies, medical communications agencies can play a vital role in supporting companies with the clinical studies in both editorial support for study protocols, organising clinical study meetings and ongoing key opinion leader liaison. External experts also have a, an intrinsic role to play in the development and execution of any effective strategic communications plan. They provide clinical insights, they can help design study protocols and course authorship of publications. So working with external experts also provides a key role for medical communications agencies. We provide ongoing services in KOL identification and mapping, we can help manage advisory boards and developing presentations for meetings and congresses to name just a few of those activities. 
the dissemination of evidence through clinical evidence through peer-reviewed publications is another intrinsic part of any strategic communications plan. And again, it's a rich opportunity for medical communications agencies to support their clients through publication planning, editorial and writing support, and publication submission and tracking. Once published in the, uh, in the journals, clinical data can now be presented at congresses. These can be closed meetings, uh, paid for by the client company, uh, standalone meetings for invited guests only, or open uh, meetings at disease-specific congresses, such as I've written here at the American Society of Clinical Oncology, which is ASCO to many of you. And client companies often turn to medical communication agencies to help plan and prepare and manage the participation in these events by providing both logistical and content support. Advocacy groups, you'll see some names here of patient societies. Again, they are a disease specific areas and they provide a rich source of patient insights. And they represent an, a perfect platform on which to develop a variety of educational initiatives, which are an essential part of any strategic communications plan. So again, identifying the appropriate advocacy groups in your therapy area is, is, a, is a key part of the overall plan. An increasingly important part of any strategic communication plan and to is to ensure the product is priced appropriately. This process is normally managed uh, um, by the market access team at the pharmaceutical company. And their mission is to ensure that all the appropriate patients who would benefit from the medicine get rapid and maintained access to that product at the right price. And I know that many medical communications agencies are now offering specific services to help support market access departments, such as preparation of the health technology assessment documents, which are an ascent, play an essential role in seeking uh, reimbursements. Public relations is another area. It's, this is the discipline which looks after the reputation with the aim of earning understanding and support and influencing opinion and behavior. As such, it is, again, an essential component of any strategic communications plan through dissemination of press releases, news stories, market awareness programmes, and as well as managing the occasional crisis. Advertising. Advertising is the cornerstone of brand promotion. Uh, it's a fundamental part of developing the, the face and persona of the drug prior to launch. And there are many specialist agencies who work with marketing departments of the pharmaceutical companies to carefully balance and integrate the, sort of the hard science and core brand values with imagery to create compelling promotional uh, materials for both patients and prescribers. Which brings us back to medical communications agencies. Medical communications agencies themselves have quite a broad remit in supporting the development of a whole range of communication initiatives which form part of the strategic communications plan. Often increasingly working with medical affairs departments to give a bit of clear uh, air, clear water between medical and marketing functions. But the main focus of the work has been on developing publication plans and um, publication support working with, on uh, meeting and congress activities, KOL identification and, and management, with also a fundamental or a key role in development of internal and external education initiatives. Uh, and of course, lots and lots of slide sets. So in summary, strategic communications planning in the pharmaceutical industry um, Hopefully I've shown you how important it is in developing the plan itself as the blueprint for all subsequent communication activities. And I've hopefully also highlighted certain areas where specialist medical communication, communications agencies can get involved in executing these tactics and in doing so becoming an indispensable partner for their clients. So thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>